Hey Jane, this is an upside down one for you today. Leaders identify what doesn't work for them. Think of that old saying, is the message sent, the message received? Do we impact in the way that we think we do? Do we know what works and what doesn't? And how do we know? And how much do we assume and just guess? There are times when we plan things, present it, and we can feel the silence, the thunder, the misalignment in the room. When do you shoot and miss, try and fail? Do you know when you miss the mark? And when you know and, and know when things aren't working. I have a saying, silence isn't helpful. Silence tells a big story. Silence is a sign of disengagement and people not sharing and buying into the real story. Are you reflective enough to read the room and to know your impact? Are you getting the right feedback about your work? Are you connecting with your impact? Is what you think if you, is what you think is happening reality? Do you understand understand your team enough to impact? What works for them? How do they learn? And do your skills match? We need different types of leaders for different teams and sometimes for the same team in different situations. I am a leader of people, emotion, ideation, and oddly strategy and process. My VP is a connector. Another in my team takes ideas and brings them to life. We have two finishers in the team. They cross the T's, dot the I's. They make sure that things are polished and look and fit as they should. Have you got an understanding of who leads what and when on your team? Who can handle what when they're being delegated to? What level of autonomy they can manage? What level of detail do they need to be successful? Is the team they are leading going to respond to their leadership? You lead teams of leaders and have to support them to lead. And then you lead them and have to measure your own lead. When you miss or fail, are you brave enough to stop the train? Do you put on the brakes, even if you are halfway through and regroup? Or do you go through with it all, even if you know it's not going to measure up? And when you let this, let this happen, do you take the time to review, analyse the impact and the result, work out why, and use this to redirect the next journey? Or do you just keep pushing? Me, I'm about impact cycles and stopping to measure. It is situation dependent. It's low risk and I can see things not working in a way that creates the highest impact. Sometimes I actually let the task run its course. Then we stop, review, and look at how it went, the impact and the why. What leadership decisions would have strengthened the process? What would we do differently? How did we impact? How do we know? Sometimes if we have the luxury of time and low risk, letting things fail is a great opportunity to grow and to learn. When it is high stakes and high risk, are you brave enough to stop, to regroup, reset and redirect? When you delegate, do you know what works for those on your team? Do you know how to get the best from them? What doesn't work for you? For me, high structure. I love systems and process, but within reason. I need to know what do you want and how do you want it, and then I need to be left to bounce to get there. Micromanagement. I am qualified, a professional, and I have ideas to input to. Unless I am in mode of constant, consistent failure, please let me get on the job that I'm doing and that you've employed me to do. Another one for me, forms and templates, particularly in Excel, I fail. Educators excel at not filling in forms well. Second to that, I hate the confines of a form. Where do I get to draw and ideate? And then low emotion and low participation environments. I like to talk and bounce and share. If I am restrained or restricted, I just want to leave. If I go silent or start to draw, these are signs of me trying hard to control myself. I want to think, and thinking is about talking for me.
Oh yeah, and faked or assumed trust discussions. Either we trust each other and we can be transparent, share and challenge each other in true collaboration, or just tell us what to do and direct us. Don't fake share or set up fake discussions. Oh yeah, distance, silence and indecisiveness. Does this make sense? There are those who are exactly the opposite. Everything on my doesn't work for me will be high priority for other people. What I am saying is learn to read the crowd, the scenario and the needs. Different situations need different levels of intervention, clarity, organisation and ways of working. Know your team and what they need from you to excel. Believe me, it's complicated. But with connection and understanding, you can win. You won't keep all of the people on board and happy all of the time. But if we can connect with more people more often, we will have stronger teams, higher performance, greater self-accountability and results. Build communication and connection and commitment through trust. Then build measures of feedback, questioning and conflict. Finally, accountability and result measures. Do this in that order. Remember, silence does not mean commitment, alignment and that people agree. Silence can mean confusion, dissension and defiance. Are you impacting the way you think? Do you see when it's not working? And are you brave enough to do something about it when it's not right?